Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and in today's video I'm talking about why people fear Jordan Peterson, why openness is so difficult and why it's so difficult to deal with a person like J.K. Rowling when she says something that could be interpreted as transphobic. Are you an open person? Find out in today's video. One of the greatest tragedies is the tragedy of feeling misunderstood and today we live in the world of echo chambers. That means we are bred into finding people that think the way that we do and talk the way that we do. We are brainwashed into thinking that everyone around us feels and thinks the same way and we are rarely taught how to deal with the fact that other people can feel differently. So a good test of openness is how open are you to differing viewpoints? Now an example for that is what do you do and how do you handle if somebody that you know is a COVID skeptic? What, if, what do you do if somebody starts talking about conspiracy theories? How do you handle if for example, um, a family member says that they are against abortion. What happens to you if uh, somebody around you says that they are a feminist? <laughs> what, uh, how do you respond if somebody says something that could be interpreted as transphobic? Openness is a problem and a difficult thing. It's a struggle. People think that openness is... Uh, something easy and effortless people think and tend to overrate their own openness and most people are actually far less open-minded than what they think they are by the way if you're open to hear more interesting videos like this feel free to subscribe to my channel it costs nothing and you can always unsubscribe later we struggle with openness and the reason for this is because we struggle with cleanliness. We live in a society that values cleanliness very highly. We want things to be organized and neat. That means we want to have clearly defined signs. Uh, there should be a yes side and a no side. Things should be black and white, simple and clean. Headlines and thumbnails should point the clear picture. Virtues should be signaled in the most overt and obvious way possible. And that means people do their best to mimic and to organize themselves into these boxes and to uh, organize society in this way. Now, if things are not organized, <laughs> we tend to think of them as dirt. Imagine something in your room is not in the place where it belongs. Uh, that's a mess. That's dirt. You gotta throw that away. And that's the case when it comes to openness. And... Uh, <laughs> That's why it can be so hard to be in the middle in a political discussion. Imagine that you're a person that employs critical thinking and tries to see the world from both sides. Imagine that you're a person that can understand, relate to and hear everyone. Imagine that you're a person that can entertain both viewpoints or a person that can sometimes side with the left on political matters and sometimes with the right. Something you'll notice is people will find that very difficult and they'll find you very difficult. And that's the case with Jordan Peterson. I want to bring up Jordan Peterson because he's a good example of uh, actually quite a centrist in modern standards. Jordan Peterson does not argue for any kind of extreme changes in how society should be run. He has never sided openly with the Republicans or the conservatives. He has never really sided with liberals. And perhaps he's slightly more right-leaning than left-leaning, that's possible. Uh, but if you'd summarize his viewpoints, the way he summarized his viewpoints is, well, sometimes it's good to have closed borders and sometimes it's good to have open borders and it depends on the time and the society. And that's his stance, he's a pragmatic. He thinks, yeah, you should employ the politics that are reasonable for the time. You should look at what's smart in a situation and do what's smart in that situation. Jordan Peterson is a person that has sparked a lot of criticism and a person that is followed by a lot of controversy. And no wonder, he's a person that puts himself in the spotlight. But why are people so afraid of Jordan Peterson and why is it so difficult to deal with a person like Jordan Peterson? 
I mean, when you take traditional right wingers, it's so easy to say, okay, that person is a right winger. They're saying things that are um, anti-abortion. They're saying things that are clearly uh, right wing, anti-women. <laughs> They're saying things that are obviously uh, despicable from a left wing standpoint. But when you take a person like Jordan Peterson, it's more hints, insinuations, possibilities. Perhaps his argument could be interpreted like this. Perhaps if we follow his line of reasoning, we could come to this terrible, horrible conclusion. And that's the thing when it comes to INFJ and INTJ personality types. INFJ and INTJ personality types are said to have introverted intuition as their strongest cognitive function, their most conscious cognitive function. Carl Jung described these kind of personality types as personality types that would often take the form of... Uh, uh, the voice crying in the wilderness, the person, the crackpot, the uh, conspiracy nutter, the artist, the person that speaks their mind and speaks out of their perception, unfiltered. They, uh, they talk about questions, theories, perspectives that often don't align with common sense or the way people look at things today. These kind of people, these kind of personality types have often been followed by a degree of suspicion in society. If we just take the example of Socrates, Socrates was offered the poisonous chalice. Why was he offered the poisonous chalice? For potentially misleading the youth. There was a fear that perhaps his ideas could somehow mislead the youth. Perhaps the youth would be led astray by his very words. His words themselves were so dangerous that people might listen to them and might draw scary or dangerous conclusions, conclusions that could threaten society or authority or government in some form. And these are the kind of uh, conspiracies that often follow INFJ and INTJ characters. Another example is the Swedish politician Olof Palme. And there were a wide range of conspiracies regarding Olaf Palme. People thought a lot of things about him. There were people that loved him, and there were people that hated him. And there were people that were afraid of him. And people that were afraid of him had all ranges of theories about him. Theories that he was the Antichrist, theories that he was from Satan. Uh, there were connections between him and the Mark of the Beast. People thought a lot of scary things, and eventually he was actually murdered for his political beliefs. So being a person that speaks your mind freely, you might think that, hey, these things are just words. Words cannot hurt you. Words cannot hurt anyone. Uh, but that's not often how the case is. Words are dangerous. Words can hurt people. And if you hurt a person, you don't really get to decide that you didn't. That's also a thing that INFJs and INTJs have to deal with. We cannot fully plan for how people will interpret what we say. You might come out of this view, out of this very video, feeling like, or coming to a conclusion that is uh, hostile or negative. You might dislike what I say. And I have no right to say that you shouldn't be. I cannot control the way you respond to it and your emotions and your reflections to what I say are valid. Everyone has a right to their emotions and to feel things and to feel resistance to things. To me, the most important thing is how we are able to handle these emotions. And that means you're perfectly in line to disagree with Jordan Peterson or to be offended by J.K. Rowling's statements and trans people. You're perfectly entitled to have opinions about different people in society. And you're entitled to make your own interpretations of what they say. However, what I want you to do and the thing I want to teach you is learn to treat people with respect and openness, regardless of how you might feel. That means feel free to express anger or to express that you're upset with a person for something they say, but also be prepared to show respect for that person, to explain their views and to uh, discuss how they feel and how they think about something. We are said to be more sensitive than ever today, and that's also because, yeah, we tolerate less things than we did before. In the past, we had slavery, we had persecution, we had outright homophobia and sexism. We had uh, people that were deeply mistreated in our society. 
We had people that lived under a very unfair standards, people that were not given the right to an education, people that were followed and killed for their very ethnicity or religious beliefs. So today we don't really tolerate those things. And you know, there's a statement that says, you know, you can tolerate everything but intolerance itself. Now, it's very important to interpret this statement very, very carefully. You can tolerate everything but tolerant intolerance itself. This means you can have uh, and you can show acceptance to everything but those that don't accept you, that don't accept or listen to you. That means if somebody does not want to listen to you, if somebody is refusing to hear your viewpoint, if somebody is aggressive towards you or is trying to put you down or is uh, turning you into a straw man, that means they're making your argument into an extreme that's far from the case. They're making you seem bad. They're um, clonish. They're uh, putting you down. They're, um, yeah. Uh, trying to paint you as somebody evil, if people are doing these things, if people are uh, being that aggressive and that intolerant to you, uh, you have a right to say, no, sorry, that's not what I believe at all. You're not listening to me properly. If you're ready to listen to what I have to say, I'd be happy to continue this discussion. But if you're not prepared to listen to me, this discussion is over. That means... Yeah, people are allowed to disagree with you. They're allowed to have feelings about what you say. Yeah, okay, they get upset. What's the big deal? Feelings are never going to kill you. <laughs> feelings are just emotional information. Yeah, okay, people are offended by something. They're allowed to be that as long as, even if they are offended, they keep trying to listen to you. They keep trying to hear you out. They keep trying to understand you. If they come to the point where it's outright disgust, where it's eye rolling, where it's uh, to the point of uh, uh, intolerance, where it's to the point of not listening, if you're noticing that the other person has not even responded to what you said, if you're noticing that the other person is refusing to address your arguments, you're in a bad discussion. You're not learning anything and they are not learning anything. And it's not good for you and it's not good for that person. You know, continuing that kind of an argument it's only going to lead to increased prolonged pain because that person is going to get more and more upset as they build a more and more radical extreme version of your argument, as they become more and more <laughs> insecure, as they become even more delusional about who you are, what you believe. They're going to fall into paranoia and anxiety and that can lead to uh, disconnect on a bigger stage. It can lead to, you know... Uh, in the very extreme to uh, what makes a person kill another person, you know, what makes a person um, bully another person, what makes a person uh, abuse another person, you know, that's, uh, if you follow that argument far enough and let it escalate far enough, that's um, never going to lead to anywhere good. So notice also when that kind of tension becomes unbearable, when, uh, a person who is upset by you is starting to make a very, very <laughs> aggressive gestures or when they're starting to uh, slander your name or uh, yell at you or insult you or curse at you because you don't deserve that and neither does that person. That person is probably better and probably could be better and could address their views in a better way. So when you argue with another person, the main thing you can do is go into that argument, helping that person strengthen their arguments. If that person is coming to you with a bad argument, if that person is coming to you or criticizing you based on a misunderstanding, help them rephrase their argument. Did you mean this? Did you mean to say that? I think you misunderstood me there. Uh, did you perhaps mean to think about this? Did you perhaps consider that? Try to help that person come to a better conclusion and to help that person respond to and deal with that situation more logically. Help that person become a smarter person and make sure that you always show that person the respect. Give that person the benefit of the doubt. Something I see today with a lot of people is the opposite of the benefit of the doubt. Uh, a lot of discussions start on the basis of distrust. That means we want to interpret the very worst out of what a person says. Imagine we're having a text-based conversation. There are no 
gestures or facial expressions. Uh, there is no chance to expand on your argument or uh, to see and to have a dialogue with the other person. It's a two-way monologue. You're writing down your text and they are responding with their text. Imagine you're in such a situation. It's very important in those situations to be very, very careful with how you interpret that person and to make sure that you give that person the benefit of the doubt. Why is it that important? Because you want to help that person see things the way you see it. You want to help that person come closer to your argument. Or perhaps that's not what you're doing at all. Is it maybe possible that you are trying to distance yourself from that person? Is it perhaps possible that you're trying to make that person hurt you? Is it perhaps possible that you're trying to be afraid, that you are trying to uh, avoid something, that there is something scary about what they say, something possibly true that is very hard to deal with? Is it not uncomfortable when a person on the other side expresses a viewpoint that makes sense? Is it not easier than to pretend they didn't say it at all and to pretend they meant something completely horrible instead? Yeah, think about how you go into an argument and what you want to achieve with it. Do you want to get closer to the other person or do you want to get further away? What are your thoughts on Jordan Peterson and uh, Socrates? And why do you think that it's so scary with these kind of thought leaders? Why is it so scary with philosophers? Why is it so scary with educated intellectuals? Why are these people, why are these ideas so terrifying? Why is it so hard to deal with people that speculate, theorize, and look at things from different viewpoints? Thank you all for watching and see you all in the next video.